No one has ever talked about work on their deathbed. It's always family. So if family is my number one investment, then I'm going to do the coaching, do the learning, figure this out now while they're with me so that they can be abundant. Why do so many people say that their family is everything, but they don't back it with their time, their calendar, their words, their love and affection? Identity. I think work. <laughs> Actually, here's why. Because raising children is like planting a seed and hitting a bonus is immediate. So when you raise kids, it's a thankless job. <laughs> for decades, and For probably. decades, and you have no idea how you did. There's no instant gratification oh, with parenting. Man. Here's what I think. Parenting- Unless you give your child something, a gift, and they right. love you and hug right. you in a moment right. or something, yeah. But the, oh, the long term, it's like, we'll see how it happens. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You put the recipe in, like, let's see what happens, right? But I think parenting is really hard, but for all the right reasons, right? Like, you know, you, you have to get eight hours of sleep. That's hard. Working out, hard. Eating the right stuff, hard. Parenting is hard, but in all the good ways that you always have wanted to become in the first place. What better way to learn selflessness? What better way to learn sacrifice? What better way to like find true inner, like deep joy and satisfaction? That all comes from being an amazing parent. You can get it in other places too, but it comes from being an amazing parent and raising humans that start out completely scarcity completely selfish, completely entitled. And our job is to mold them into productive adults, not future children. Wow. Yeah. But you don't get that instant gratification is what you're saying. You don't. And it's thankless. It's thankless for so long. And, but, but that's why I love adults of like, parents of adult children that have like grown as amazing adults. Cause you ever met, there's two types of older people. People that are bitter towards the world the old guy on the corner of the street that's cussing at you Just and says whatever he thinks, hitting yeah. you with a stick, mad at the government and whatever the Democrats are doing. But then there's the old sweet person, like the old lady or the old guy who's just so kind, so loving, so generous, so helpful. Like what turns people into that? Is it a life of like bitterness and victimhood and entitlement? Probably for that old man, yeah. the angry one. Or a life of like refinement and growth and value creation. Yes turns that into a sweet old person. I want the sweet old man. That's my goal. Sure. So when parents are like, when their kids are growing up, that's just a sweet, sweet thing. Yes. I saw someone, uh, a friend of mine, Noah Kagan, did an interview with, I can't remember, some billionaire, some some super successful yep. billionaire. He was an older gentleman, probably in his 70s, maybe 80. And he asked him like, what's his definition of success at this season of his life? And he said, my adult children wanting to spend time with me because they actually enjoy spending time with me. Not because I have money, not that's because right. I'm successful, not because I give them anything, because they just want to hang out with me. That's right. And I was like, that's probably what every, you know, elderly individual of that's, adult that's what kids they all say. want. That's right. Their their kids to come over to their house on the weekends and yeah. hang out. Yeah. If you if you want if you want to have an incredible legacy, you should spend half as much money on your children and twice as much time. Mm. See, there's, there is no, there, kids do not know the difference between quality time and quantity time. There's no difference. It's not up to you to decide. That doing Legos with your five-year-old could be a core memory for the rest of their life. And you had no idea. Right. With children, it's just time clocked. But how do you, Scott, you know, managing all these businesses oh, and man. have all this, you're traveling constantly, uh, you've got, coaching tons of people, you're, you know, yep. you're always on the go. How do you find the time, quality or quantity to invest in your family and your kids? Yeah. So it starts with our structure. Okay. So I, I've put people around me in my life who agree first. It starts with inner circle. So we have a structure in our world where the five closest families around us and our children have the same values of investing in our families together. Your friend families. Our closest families. We are on the same mission in all of the values I just walked you through. And that um, could be together as all the families, yep. or it could be like on the weekends we do this as yep. anyone's welcome to come we're over. We're together on we're weekends. family time. Yeah, yep. yeah. Travel. Like we, this is our inner circle because this is done in community. Mm. If you're on an island, it's very difficult. So parenting, I believe, should be done in community. That's just why we do coaching with families all the time at dinner table. So you have to unpack this with other families. You have to have families that align with your values. See, here's the teenager hack, you ready? You need 
coaches and trusted ad other adults in your teenager's life that can reinforce the things you care about most. You have to have that. they may not always listen to you. They, w they won't after a while. Like there's a chunk of time. But, but if there's five other, you know, coaches or teachers or mentors That's that right. say the same things, yeah. they might resonate with them and say, okay, maybe dad was right all along. You probably have 100,000 teenagers that have listened to you that go to their parents and go, you guys, I just learned this awesome thing from Lewis. And they're like, I've been saying this my That's whole life right. to you. Yeah. But you want to say that to your kids. Yeah, yeah. You want your kids coming to you with like revealed knowledge that you've been trying to teach them for 10 years. It doesn't matter who gave them the light bulb. Yeah. You celebrate it. It's a thankless job, I guess, That's right? That's it. You, know, you, so, you, you teach it, but someone else gets the right. credit. <laughs> so it starts with your inner circle. Like we are clear on that piece. Um, and then it goes into structure. And so with structure, uh, my wife and I, every year we block out stuff first for our family. Like the whole calendar year? The whole year. Trips, dates, family stuff, like what we're doing with our kids, big events, like that goes first. Then we can fill in work mm -hmm. and other things after. You have to do that. Um, every Sunday night, we're like going over the week, we're just blocking out date night. We're blocking out when the kids' events are. Mm -hmm. Work fills in that gap. Right, like that is the best way to focus your time and effort. So schedule family stuff first, then fill in the gaps with work or right. other things. That's exactly right. Structure, inner circle. Is there an ele another element to this? I mean, going through our six strategies. Yeah, I yeah. got I, so the pay, inner, to, pay the, to a point was five. That's right. Yep. And then, but but the last part of pay to point is like, how do you do first phone? How what do you pay for? Like, how do I do car? How do we do college? Are we doing college? Do we care about college? Is it an indoctrination station or is it good? Like, what about the 25, 35 year old I love you versus coasting? What do we want to die with? Hmm. What is our number that we're okay with? How much do we want to give? Like, these are questions that nobody asks their children or themselves. And what our thing is like, we need to be open about these conversations. We have to have a roadmap. Because if you don't have a roadmap for this, you're reactive. See, there's all these other parenting, and you've had other amazing parent people here, but there's about a thousand different parenting strategies out there. Free range, gentle, like whatever, helicopter, laissez-faire, there's a million of them. I look at it with one lens. You're either parenting proactively or you're parenting reactively. Most parents are just trying to get through it, get them fed, keep them safe, get them to, get them to bed, get them to school. They're being reactive when all these things come up. And that's what causes a lot of these problems. If you can just be a little bit proactive, these are little nudges. Nothing I've told you today is hard, crazy. These are little nudges in the right direction and then just unpack them with someone and take your first step. See, that's proactive parenting. That's all that matters. Yeah, and you don't have to have it all figured out in a weekend or something. This is gonna take time to develop and that's right. navigate and adjust over time. Long-term communities. Yeah. Yep.